Hey everyone, I have put together the steps for you to learn graphic design from home by yourself so that you can actually start your own design business now and from home. So this is based on my own design school curriculum and experience there. I went to Art Center in LA and the different principles that actually really helped me to gain confidence as a designer even after art school. So make sure you do subscribe to my channel if you are not already so that you get weekly tips on graphic design and growing your own design business. So the first step in learning graphic design is you must understand what design is. It's super tempting to just jump to the programs, right? But actually that's like jumping to driving a car without even knowing what a car is. So in art school, when I took basic design, I did it all without computer, without using the computer, using paint, using markers and pencils. So this actually took away the complication of the computer and it allowed me to really understand what each design principle meant. There are those that want to be designers and think that because they own Photoshop and can put type on a page, that makes them a designer. But the thing is, the design itself is an underlying technology and it starts away from the computer. I didn't even know the computer programs. I didn't even own an actual computer to design with until later in my design school. Do you feel compelled to just jump into the computer first? I definitely understand if you do and let me know in the chat. So design actually means to designate or put items on a page where they will look the most pleasing and actually draw the attention of their ideal viewer, who you're trying to get the attention of. So it's not just about a computer program. So what I would say to do is to go through each of the fundamentals, taking one subject at a time, really studying them and learning about them before ever hitting the computer. Now this may sound crazy, but I promise you, it is the best way to learn. Study first about composition, and this is the overarching layout of what goes where on a page, and the different principles of why things look better when placed applying the rule of thirds, using white space, aligning to a common grid and a rule and using bigger and smaller items to make the composition more attractive and many more basic concepts that you can learn by actually going through and really understanding each one at a time. Sketch this out on a piece of paper using rough blocks or rectangles and lines of type just to get the concepts down. Then move on to typography, understanding when to use serif fonts and when to use sans serif fonts. Understand what fonts look good together and why you should try to stick with no more than two fonts in a composition. Go look through signs and billboards and ads and books and start to notice how many fonts are being used and why they are placed specific ways. You can check out my typography video to understand this subject a bit more. I'm going to link it below and also in the cards above. And then you want to understand the basics of colors why certain colors are chosen for certain moods, how to make pleasing designs that don't have too many colors. Have you seen those where it just makes your eye go crazy because you don't know what to look for? These actually need to follow color palettes and how you can draw these colors from nature to create some beautifully pleasing designs. You should also note how colors help you to draw the eye through a design and tell the reader what to read first, what to read second, and so on. So for color theory in school, I used only paint and actually boards and different paper, and this really helped me to get a deep sense of how to make color harmony and what the color wheel was. Now I'm going to link to some great books on each of these subjects below, as well as some of my own videos on the subjects so that you can really get a good understanding of each. After you have immersed yourself and spent a good few weeks on each of these subjects, I would then allow you to go on to the computer programs to really help put your design understanding to practical use. Now I feel that computers have become both a godsend and a curse because they blind people from learning the true art of design itself. Thinking of them as just another tool, such as a paintbrush or a canvas, is really the way you have to think about them. They aren't just the end all of, if you know the computer programs and you're a designer, that's not how it works. So my favorite programs are the Adobe Creative Cloud programs, and the main ones that I focus on are Photoshop, 
InDesign, and Illustrator. Now, Photoshop was created for photographers originally, and it has a lot of darkroom terminology throughout the whole program, just to help make photos the best that they can be. It has expanded to be an amazing tool to actually create matte paintings, incredible illustrations, and compositions, almost being like a painter's canvas. I often see designers make the mistake of doing layout there, which I feel is so much easier in Adobe InDesign. When you're creating anything for print that deals with type, it's best to create it in InDesign as the type will print much crisper this way. It'll keep the vector elements of the type. Whereas if you do it in Photoshop, it's gonna rasterize them, making them look pixelated. So InDesign actually has the capability to bring type and images into a document and can really be used to create anything from flyers, posters, banners, book covers, books, package design, magazines, catalogs, email designs, and presentations. And then it's my actual favorite program if you hadn't been able to tell. And I have some great tutorials. I'm gonna link below as well on that one. And then we have Illustrator. Now this is the ideal program for creating logo designs. When I first started, I used to use Photoshop for logos, but the problem with this is that Photoshop, like I said, it's raster based, meaning that the files are built at a fixed size using pixels. So when you try to make the files bigger, they will appear blurry or not as sharp. When you work in Illustrator, it's what's called vector based, which means it's based on lines that allow you to scale it as large as you want without losing any data or getting blurry. You can also make it really tiny and it won't lose the clarity. So this, this specific program is vital for when you're creating logos as oftentimes companies, you know, you've probably seen this, they wanna print their logos really large and have them in banners and other places or maybe on a sign or that they have them really super small like on their business card. You will be harming the company if you don't create logos in vector format. Now I suggest doing tons and tons of practice projects and try all different types of graphic design. Go onto Pinterest and find a logo design that you love and then duplicate this in Illustrator until you have figured out how it was created. Do this over and over with many logo designs until you have dissected how each was created. And then go on to flyer design and duplicate designs that you love until you've mastered them there. Always look back at the fundamentals of design that you learned in the first step to see which of them will apply to the design that you're duplicating and how that designer used these fundamentals to create an aesthetic and professional design. You should try all sorts of different type of design, packaging, print, business cards, book covers, logos. This is the time to dabble and see what you enjoy working on the most. You can spend weeks and weeks and months just practicing over and over and over. I can never overstress the amount that you should practice. And from there, you want to then create your own projects, your own practice projects, do pretend projects, or take a real company and do some projects that just for fun for them, or just make up a company, you know, decide on one, decide on a name, and just start putting together some actual uh, designs for that company. Always look at designs you like, for inspiration. I have heard people ask if this is a bad thing to do as then nothing's original, but that's not about copying. It's about keeping your standards of designs high and to the level that you want them to be at. At this point, it's all about quantity of practicing. As I mentioned, you can never do it enough. The more time you put in, the faster you will become more and more professional. You will probably get a good sense now of what type of design you like to work on. So then you should focus even deeper into that type of design. Let's say you start to have a love for logo design. Well, then you should study this inside and out. Read books, watch tutorials, do courses, learn everything you possibly can about that specific type of design that you want to focus on. You then wanna choose the type of industry you love to design for. Is it corporate logos for some big Fortune 500 companies? Is it book cover design for authors and illustrators? Is it website design for e-commerce stores? 
Choose one and go find online communities where this type of client interacts. This could be in Facebook groups. It could be in other Reddit communities and just start interacting with them. See what help they need and how your design services can actually fill a void for them in their businesses. Don't just go in there and be spammy. Comment helpful tips and start to build relationships. I would really take advantage of my free guide to actually help you understand how to get clients at the link below, which is going to really help you to grow your design business when you're ready to do so. This will take discipline. I'm not going to lie. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take determination to make yourself follow the steps one by one and master each before going on to the next. And while all of these steps won't get you a college degree, they will allow you to get to the point of professionalism with enough practice over and over because designers are needed. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't make it as a designer. There is a place for you in the design world if you become a professional and really, really take it to heart and love what you do. So do make sure you don't forget to subscribe so you can get more helpful tips and tools to become a designer and grow your own design business with consistent clients and a stable income. I will see you next time. And to learn more about the subject of graphic design, check out these videos here. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.